Hello everybody. Welcome back to another day with me, Jennifer. Um, today I'm going to talk about some stuff that's been on my mind. Um, it's been affecting me. I'm a little blurry, sorry. Um, it's been affecting me a lot more than it usually does. And what I'm going to be talking about today is um, my borderline personality disorder and how it affects my life and how it affects my personal relationships, how it affects just every single aspect of my life. Um, it's, it's a beast of a, I don't like to call it a disease or an illness because um, I don't think of it that way. Uh, well, at least I just don't like to think of it that way because then it just makes me seem, to me, this is a pin, an opinion about myself. Like, when I talk that way, saying that it's a disease and that it, I mean, I know that it is, it is a mental illness, but when I talk that way to myself, um... I don't know, it just, it, it puts me in a weird headspace, so I just, I kind of just, you know, say what it is, borderline personality disorder, um, and my treatment video about when I was in a mental hospital, when I was in mental hospitals, it was because of this, um, and, you know, other things on top of it. But mainly this, because borderline personality disorder affects, the way it affects me is very intense. Um, I, have in, I have intense emotions. Um, I have occasionally an intense anger. <sighs> Sorry, I'm, I'm still sick. Um... I disassociate, I have delusions about what's going on, um, I make up things in my head, and I know everybody does that, but I do it to an extent where I actually believe what I'm telling myself, you know, I believe this, like, I don't know, I, it's hard to explain, it's hard to, you know, talk about. But today I'm going to be talking about it and showing you pictures. Um, so, and you can kind of see the descent of my, of the process and everything about it. Um, and the way I deal with it mainly is journals. And I'll show you right now how many, this is only a fraction of the ones I finished, um, but all these journals are completely full written in. This one is the journal I had through treatment, 32604. And you can see my thought process. Today was hell. And that was all I wrote. Fuck, 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 fuck all, fuck all die. Um... This journal is, it brings back a lot of memories because I was, at, I was 16, 15 or 16 when, um, I was, I had this journal and, um, you know, I, I was in a group home when I started this one. I was living in Sitka, Alaska. Um. It says, you know, right here, 3304. Today has been a very stressful day. I had to see two therapist people, plus got suspended for school for 10 days. Everything is going wrong in my life. I'm glad that I have Nate, who was my boyfriend at the time, by my side to help me through all this shit. I hate it so fucking much. I'm pretty much on suicide watch because of my cutting. I hate this bullshit. Nobody understands me anymore. I'm like a nobody, and I have no purpose any longer. I should just kill myself. 
I don't know who would care. Everybody acts like they would care, but I know they wouldn't just straight, just shrug it off like it never happened. The only person who would care would be Dorothy, my little sister. I love her too much to put that burden on her shoulders. And see, this was my thought process on a daily basis back then. Um, and my, my little sister, where we are so close, see, I'll show you a picture of me and her. We're so close. She's a year and a half young. Oh, you bet a year and a half younger than me. And I've always been her protector. Um, you know, for a little bit there when we were teenagers, um, I was an asshole to her. I was very mean and I feel really bad for that. Um, but, you know, we click, we quickly got over that stage and became best friends. Now, this picture is was taken at, when I was in McLaughlin Youth Center in Anchorage, Alaska. It was a juvenile detention center. Um, and it was taken the day before they sent me to Utah. I was 15 years old. So... That is me and my sister. That's my sister, Dorothy. Yeah, that was taken right before they sent my ass away. And if you look close enough, you can you can see the tears in my eyes. I mean, you can see that I was sad. Let's see if I can get it to focus on it. I don't think it's going to focus, but that was July of 2004 is when they sent me off. Um, here's another picture of me and her. This is when, this was, uh, the summer before, this is like the summer that, um, I, it really hit me. Um, you know, because mental illness, what, from what I've learned, um, and I don't know if this is true, but, you know, this is just for what I've heard and what my experience has been. Um, if you are predisposed, like through hereditary, like through hereditary, if you're hereditary, if you, if you've got, if, if, I'm sorry, if a mental illness runs through your family and you're prone to it, uh, based on how you are raised is what it is that will determine how severe your mental illness will be. If you are raised in a loving home and you're predisposed to mental illness, but you're still raised in a loving, stable environment, your mental illness will not be as severe as somebody like me. And I'm not saying mine is worse. Mine's, you know, your. I'm not saying yours is uh, anyone else's um, less invalid because I had it worse. We all have a bad time. We all have hard times in our lives. Nobody's is better than the other. Nobody's is more worse than the other. Some situations are worse. Um, but I'm not invalidating anybody else because I'm saying because of what I'm saying. This is just my experience, and I know from talking to other people that I went through a traumatic time in my childhood. It was not normal. It was very, very awful. Hold on, let me take a drink of this tea before it gets cold. Y'all like my big ass Pioneer Woman cup? Anyway. Um, so, somebody like me who was raised in a... Actually, I wasn't even raised. You, I, I don't th even think you could call it that because I wasn't raised. Um, somebody like me who grew up in a traumatic environment day after day after day after day no food at never any food in the house and if it was it was like condiments and just whatever um there were we always had dirty our clothes were always dirty because we didn't have money to go to the laundromat um i was always wearing hand-me-downs um which what you know that's not bad but 
these hand-me-downs, I mean, my fucking pants were like this. I mean, you know, I was a tall little kid. And so my pants were like high waters and I got teased so much. And, you know, my teeth, I didn't, I had big buck teeth when I was little. So I got called Bug, Bugs Bunny a lot and everything. But all that didn't matter. Um, I was just trying to escape the pain um, that I was around. But anyway, this is a picture of me and her. See, I dressed like a guy. Um for a very long time because I didn't want men to look at me. Um, you know, I, I developed, you know, boobs and a butt when I was 12 years old. And when, you know, having that traumatic ex experience of being molested, um, I just didn't want nobody to look at me. So I dressed like a dude, you know, simple as that. Now, um, this picture, okay, we're going to go, we're going to do pictures. Okay, so, okay, now this is me in treatment right here. I can't get it out of the frame because I glued it shut for some reason. But this is me in treatment right here. I was 18. This is, um... In the treatment center called uh, Cottonwood Youth Academy in Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, that was right before I got released. Um, yeah, I had been locked up for years at that point. And then the next picture is this one. You can see how happy I look. Okay. Um. When I was going through treatment, I did get my borderline personality under control. I was able to, I think mainly it was because of the medications they had me on. Um, when I was discharged from treatment, I was on 17 different medications. All antipsychotics, antidepressants, mood stabilizers, sleeping pills, um, just so many medications that I should not have been on. I should, I mean, if it, I'm not, oppo I'm opposed to medication now because of that. I am traumatized because of that. I was shoved and see in, in those, in those places, if you refuse your medication, you get dropped levels. You get your shit taken away. You get put in like pretty much, you get punished, you know? You're not allowed to refuse medication. You are as an adult, but as a child, if you are under the state's control, which I was, um, you're not allowed to refuse your medication. Uh, they do not like, you know, they will, that's the no-no. So, I was never allowed to refuse my meds, so I was, you know, I had to take them. This is me, um... Right after I got out of treatment. Uh, I dyed my hair. Cut it all off. And yeah. You can see that in my eyes. I just look kind of dead. It's almost like there's nobody there. Okay. And then the descent back into. Um, it started getting worse again. After I got out of treatment. Uh, it was, I was okay for a while, and then, it's, you know, the way things happened was they took me out of a chaotic, horrible environment and put me in an environment where I knew I was safe. I, I knew that I was going to be fed. I knew I would have clean clothes. I knew that I'd be able to go to school, all of those things, and, you know, when they let me out, they plop me right back into where the place they took me out of with no skills. They didn't teach me how to do anything. And they gave me a bunch of money because in Alaska you get dividends, permanent fund dividends because of the oil that's up there. Uh, so they give everyone in Alaska a check every month, not every month, every year. And so the years I was in locked up, they had saved them. 
And then when I got out, they gave them all to me. So I had almost eight grand and I blew it on drugs. I bought so much cocaine. And you can see from these pictures, let's see, right here. Okay, this one is me. This one, I don't like the way I look in this one. You can tell that I, I was deeply affected by these things. Okay, so I went from this to this. In a span of, uh, I'd say, a month. And you, just look at my eyes. Look how just... I mean, look at my hair. Look at everything. I just look awful. I look terrible. I look sad. I look depressed. I look so sad. And then, you know, this is... I stopped all my medications by myself. Uh, I didn't have a doc, I, a, no doctor, I know it was dangerous, but I just did not want to be on them anymore, so when I got off all of them, uh, I was pretty much like a zombie, okay, so here's another picture of me, you can see how skinny I got, I mean, I still had a chubby face, but like, that one, and then here's another one. Here you can see how skinny I got from the drugs. Oh, I was 18 in this picture. And then this picture was in the depths of the worst time after treatment. Because before treatment, it was all bad. But there was like few instances, few there was a few, like, it, it seems like every few years, um, I go downhill pretty bad. And as I'm getting older, they're getting closer and closer together. You know, they're not spaced out as much as they were, my episodes. And so, in this picture, you can see, you can clearly see the, the fresh, fresh cuts on my arm, on both arms. Um... I mean, I'm not proud of these things. I'm I'm definitely not. But you can see, I mean, look. I'm in the middle. You can see all the fresh cuts on my arm. I mean, I you can tell that I had just gone wild you know I had let loose I was finally free and I felt like I can just do anything and then uh you know it's it's affected my my borderline personality disorder it has affected my relationships the worst oh here's one more picture I'll show you that's me and my sister this is after I stopped taking my medicine and I had been awake for a week straight I mean, look at my eyes. I look crazy as fuck. We were in a tiny, teeny tiny cabin in the middle of the woods in Talkeetna, Alaska. Because my sister's girlfriend was a fucking drug dealer. But anyway, um, you know, it's affected my relationships with my family. It affects the res. It mostly affects my personal relationships, my romantic relationships. Um, you know, I it's like I have two people inside of me, and it's scary. I have really one really mean, cold, heartless person who is ready to just walk away and not care what happens, you know, at that point. And then I have this other person in me who I believe is the core person who is sweet and caring and will do anything for anybody. And it's scary that I can switch so quick. And sometimes I don't even realize it. Um, I don't realize when I do it. Um, but after the fact, like if I blow up on my boyfriend, me and him get into a big fight because of me, 
because my crazy ass has thought of a, I've had a scenario in my head all day and I've worked it up and then he finally walks through the door and I blow up on him. Um, because that happens. And I'm guilty of that. And I feel awful when I do it. And I wish I wasn't like that. And he, he, and people always tell me, why don't you just be normal? Why don't you just not do that? It's like, hello, I've been dealing with this for years. And if I wanted to, if I could, if I had the ability to be normal, to just not get upset and not act like an insane person, I would have done it years ago. I mean, obviously. Nobody wants to act that way. I don't like acting that way. You think I like, because I have a problem with, like, arguing. Me and him argue, and we're driving down the highway. I will literally jump out of the car at a red light. That's how crazy I am. And I'll just walk. I don't give a fuck if it's zero degrees or a hundred degrees. I don't care if I'm wearing a tiny dress and high heels or whatever. I will get out of the car and walk. And I wish I didn't do that. Okay, this video is getting pretty long. And I'm rambling. Um, I'm going to be doing more videos on this because it needs more than one video. I mean, it probably needs like five, six videos to tell you all the fucked up shit I've done. Um, you know, because I'm mentally ill, you know? sad and I don't want my daughter to end up the way I am I mean I, I know that I'm I don't know anyway I hope you guys have had a good day or having a good day um and you know nobody is hurt nobody is sad I hope you guys um yeah, you know I don't know what I'm talking about. My mind is just like wandering. But I will be making another video tomorrow. Um, I don't know what about yet. So if there's anything specific you'd like to see from me, go ahead and put it in the comments. Um, I'm open to, su to suggestions. If you would like to hear about anything in my life, any kind of story, I'm willing to tell it. So, I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.